What is going on, guys? We are Talk Active, practicing wisdom, courage, justice, and moderation. What's happening, guys? What's happening? Happy, happy Friday, folks. I wish you guys are having some good time with your family. You know, it's the weekend and there's a lot of good things that we can do in the weekend. But first and foremost, guys, since it's the weekend and it's Friday, it's my favorite day of the week. Let's give it a shout out to ourselves because we are having a lot of fun. Yes. Yes. There is indeed a lot of improvements in our podcast. Thank you for our new subscriber, guys. And we are much appreciated with your support. And we just hit a milestone. I think we just hit 1,000 downloads, guys. It is amazing. 1,000 downloads. It's a milestone, you know. This podcast is dedicated to people that wants to improve or, you know, self-improvement. And we are not saints or, you know, uh, what do you call this, Dalai Lama. But we contribute in terms of our experiences and our models in life, which is, you know, aside from, of course, the God Almighty, Marcus Aurelius, Socrates, Epictetus, the great philosophers of this age. But other than that, guys, thank you for tuning in, guys. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you're a first timer here in our podcast, we welcome you. We welcome you. And we are talk active. One more time, we practice this justice, courage, moderation, and amazing people are we going to have in the future we're going to have like podcasts with guestings and all that stuff, man. Kiss, we are, I'm just cranking in here for some reason. I'm stuttering. <laughs> forgive me, guys. Forgive me. But in the past, we have some segments. In the segments that we had in the past, we talk about some, you know, cryptos and all that. We remove that because we want to make sure and, and concentrate on the main meat. But before we proceed on our episode 86... We're going to hit in our would rather have section. First, would you rather work a minimum wage for a job, minimum wage, any job for the rest of your life or live in the wilderness for the rest of your life? All right. What an interesting would you rather have segment. I think it's... I don't know if I made a mistake of putting this segment back. (laughs) But I think, guys, I'm going to pick. I am going to pick since I'm I can't really podcast if I'm in the wilderness. Can I? So I'm going to pick the minimum wage. It was said work a minimum wage. Okay, here's the thing. You can work minimum wage, but it didn't say that you cannot make your own business you cannot do stock trading or you cannot do crypto trading so you still have that you know it's it wasn't laid out so i'm picking the minimum wage for the rest of my life so that i can podcast with you guys you know that's how much i love you guys man and amazing because we have a lot of improvements in a lot of you know uh, uh moving with our podcast episode 86 in the month of july we are going to the theme of duty so today's episode 86 is going to be entitled a small knowledge is menacing small knowledge is menacing so once again guys thank you for tuning in and we are about to grind this out so Here's the thing. Everyone has a duty, whether be in church, in construction site, in school, in sports events. We follow a structure, right? Since we follow a structure, 
we are organized. We have somewhat of a guide in our day-to-day life. But I'll give you a quick example here. In a basketball team, there is an assistant coach. Where there is an assistant coach, there is a head coach, which is the main coach of the team. There is also a medical team. They take care of, you know, just in case of emergencies, providing some oxygen when players are getting too tired. They do provide that. You see those NFL players when they have like, you know, winter time or it's very hot. The, the medical team has those bottles of oxygen, pure oxygen, and give it to their players so that you can recover quickly. That way you can get back into the field and try to win the game, especially, you know, it's crank time playoffs championships, Super Bowl, those are really critical moments. So medical team is part of that structure. So it's very important. So moving on, aside from the medical team, the team would, wouldn't be, you know, complete without the actual players. Now, the actual players have also a structure. That's why we have a captain ball or a captain of the team or, you know, a certain position, like you are a power forward, um, you're a center, you're a shooting guard, you're a point guard. So that within the players, they have their own structures aside from the main structure of the team. Then why are we putting this up? Because structure is not by accident, okay? Structure is there. It's designed for certain individuals that carries that responsibility or duty to achieve a common goal. So when we talk about common goal, winning a championship in NFL, for example, Super Bowl, that would be the goal. Is go, go, go capture the biggest stage in football in the entire earth, in the entire universe, and become a Super Bowl champion. That is the main goal of the team. So in a sports environment, that would be the biggest achievement is to become a champion. Now, if we scale back and we step back, where are we going towards this episode, Ben? So if we step back, one of the primary I would say if there's a snake, this is the head of the, you know, species. The coach's primary duty is to realize what is happening. So when they are playing, the coach has a presence of mind of what is actually the current situation. He needs to realize the current situation and be able to adapt on the pressure. So if you're there, they're down for like, 20 points in its fourth quarter and there's 10 minutes left rest assured the coach should be assessing every single situations and putting the right players in the floor to be able to compensate and possible comeback to win the game so to instill courage and determination to his players that would be the main one of the main roles and characteristics of a coach. All of the team, inside that team, they they meet up on a common goal, which is they all work hard. The hours they put in into the training itself prior to the game, the possibility of injuries, um, possibility of you know um, absence for the players, and on top of that one, the recovery part of it, we put that into context. So we're we're dissecting the structure and where where are we heading in this one? So it's going to be a lot my bad. <laughs> it's it's going to be irrelevant if the coach do not believe in his players. So all of this dissection or description that we just gave if all these is going to be irrelevant if the coach do not trust his players. Great athletes are not born. They are trained by coaches. That's a fact. So, so in life, we do not 
we did not get out of this world or in earth, you know, knowing everything. Nope. We have parents. It's a structure designed by God, the ultimate creator, and he knows everything. I'm not going back into that, you know, side of, of the pool. Once a great philosopher named Epictetus said, every great power is dangerous for the beginners. You must therefore wield them as you are able, but in harmony with nature. So what Epictetus is trying to point out here is that natural talent, if not guided, is terribly dangerous. And if not synchronized with its environmental factors, when we say environmental factors, family, um, people that he grows up with, um, location, you know, how the kid grow up or how you grow up, where you grow up, that affects it. We're just pointing out those those sides of, of aspects and where you can point out and, you know, be realistic to what is happening. Prime example, prime example, I believe... You guys know that uh, Spider-Man movie. Um, Mani Pacquiao always say that. Mani Pacquiao, man, I, mm, one of one of the greatest in boxing history. Yet he always says this: Why? What's the mo- most famous quote? You know, great power comes with great responsibility. That's very common, right? Yeah, indeed. But the difference is in the movie or in Spider-Man itself, Spider- Spider-Man did not have a mentor. He did not have somebody to teach him. Spider-Man did not have a teacher or a coach. Nobody taught him on how to spew web in his wrist or how he climbs the building, you know, jumping and all that stuff without you know, hurting other people, but he figured that out himself. But when you look at his structure, it was a wild mess. Although it was positive at the end of, you know, his journey, it turned out well. But you can see without the structure, it's dangerous because he wasn't in sync with his surroundings. That's what one of Epictetus is pointing out. Now, talking about great people and coach, we're going to give an example here, guys. Freddie Roach, Coach Freddie Roach to Mani Pacquiao, you know, from rags to riches. Mani Pacquiao rose indeed from nothingness to one of currently right now, 2022. He is in the history of one of the most biggest paid athletes in history, according to... Um, I forgot what, where did I look at it? But for the past couple of years in the top 100, like people in all of sports, Mani Pacquiao was within that top 20 or between top 20 to 30. He's there. So that just manifests that he is from, from rags to riches. He, he made it. But if you know his story, he used to help his mother, um, selling fish in the market early in the morning. And then after that early morning, he goes to training. He goes to like a shabby gym. He did what he had to do to put on work so that he can achieve to become a better boxer until, you know, the time, the right time came, Freddie Roach got him and the rest is history. That's, that's amazing story of Manny Pacquiao. Also, Legendary coach Roy Williams from North Carolina. Familiar? Yeah, familiar. He coached the great Michael Jordan in college. Hitting the game-winning jumper against Georgetown kick-started Michael Jordan's legendary career. We know his story goes under the Chicago Bulls coach Phil Jackson. And there's a documentary in Netflix or... It's amazing. We all know basketball lovers. Michael Jordan is the cream of the crop. Regardless of what you say, I would say top three. Definitely Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. And I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
LeBron James in our era, in our era. But other than that, these are famous coaches that cultivated and guided this talents. But my most favorite of these coaches are is not R. <laughs> Constantine Cus de Amato. You know, Constantine Cus de Amato. I think you've heard it if you're a boxing fan, but that is the coach of the great Iron Mike Tyson. And if you follow Iron Mike Tyson's career, there was a lot of ups and downs, but man, I'm telling you, it's one of the ins most ins inspired determination in life that I've seen and and I'm I'm never going to be uh uh tired of watching that, you know, um documentary from Mike Tyson, man. Um in his younger days, Cuss, they call him Cuss, C U S, that's his uh nickname, Cuss. Cuss told Mike that you are going to be a world champion. Those are the exact words of Cuss Diamante to Mike Tyson during an interview Mike Tyson always gets emotional when they talk about Cus de Amato, his coach. But immediately Mike recovers after like that emotion, you know, uh, that much impact Cus put to Mike's life. That that's how much impact he did affect Mike Tyson's life. That's why. Um, Mike Tyson said that Cus does not like showing, does not like Mike showing emotion, regardless of where it is. So it, whether in ring, in the ring, in in um, training or in interviews, he doesn't like that Mike Tyson is showing emotion because there's something about Cus's work ethics. But you know, Mike cries about that he cries about that while crying mike said how did he know that i was the one i was going to be a champion as young as i am and as old as cuz how did he say those words i mean it's popular for everybody to say to encourage for young people that you're going to be the champion but we all know it it doesn't work out like that it doesn't work out like that but in a, coming from a legend like Mike Tyson, you know, it's it's not going to be a regular talk because that is, yeah, the legendary Mike Tyson. But he said, how did he know about that? The interviewer said, you were a specimen, Mike. You're, you're a specimen. You're one of a kind, physicality and all that stuff. You're a specimen. But what struck me there is what Mike Tyson replies to the interviewer, he said, it takes more than to be a fighter. It's not just being a specimen, but it takes more than that to be a fighter. So within that statement, it shows that it's not about me, my only natural physical gift or ability that I can, you know, make out and become a champion in due time. Mike got his footing because of Cus, because of his coach. But where are we pointing out in this one, guys? <laughs> I'm pointing out that great teachers are usually hardest on their most promising students. And that goes in history as well. When a coach or a teacher see a possibility... A probability developing promising long story short they want it to be fully recognized by their students they want it to be fully recognized that they can grasp and realize that they have this capability but it's a process regardless of they know or not it is a process because normal people can tell i'm just going to give you an example can tell that mike tyson is indeed not the biggest in the heavyweight ranking in his time he's not the tallest 
but we know he's a specimen because he has this natural ability. That came from the interview itself. But Mike Tyson, in his own words, said it takes more than that to be a fighter. And he is one of the greatest champion ever lived till this day. Cus de Amato's teachings was already planted to Mike Tyson's soul. He's sharing this to that interview and that itself inspired a lot of people of course man including me i would i wouldn't be lying about that but overall i'm pointing out that great teachers are aware of that natural ability and quick comprehensions is dangerous if left unchecked so regardless of how gifted you are if you don't seek guidance that's why you, we have mentor, mentors, we have coaches. That way we can cultivate and become better. But that would be the meat of our small knowledge is menacing section, guys. We're going to head out to our ending stage now. It's past 20 minutes. The coach knows his duty. The coach knows that promise can lead to victory, but also a promise can lead to overconfidence. That manufactures bad practice. Why? Because those who are fast learners, geniuses, gifted specimens are notorious for bypassing or diverting the basic lessons and ignoring the fundamentals. Friends, that is why small knowledge is menacing. Don't get shifted in one side. Slow it down. Take a breather. Train with humbleness. Thank you for listening, guys. This is your main man, Ben. Always remember, God is good all the time.